Uh, today we would be talking about few of the topics which have been uh, which have been appearing in the newspapers. These questions actually will depend on how you use your content in GS two, GS three. Even you can use it in GS four also. Essay building can happen also on these particular points. When we talk about the election commissions uh, appointment procedure and how they handle the elections, it can definitely help us in GS two. So there is a news article that is appearing today is election commissions election commissioner Arun Goyal has resigned yesterday. Although his tenure was supposed to be until twenty twenty seven, and he was supposed to supersede or he was supposed to once actually uh, the current chief election commissioner would have retired he would have got the chief election commissioner post as well with his resignation the election commission has now just reduced to one member and that member is chief election commissioner rajiv kumar election commissioner anup chandra pandey retired in february so what is happening as we know that chief election commissioner is a three member body three member body and out of which there is one cec chief election commissioner and there are two election commissioners ecs whenever a lok sabha poll is conducted or a state poll is conducted it is the election commission of india which takes into consideration all the preparation so when one of the chief election one of the election commissioner does re, does does submit resignation it creates a huge logistic issues now what will happen next the appointment process for the new chief election commissioner involves a search committee and that is led by law minister and including two union secretaries what they do is they shortlist five new names then after the selection committee will be headed by the prime minister a union cabinet also union cabinet minister it will be nominated by prime minister and leader of opposition in the lok sabha or leader of the single largest opposition parties so just like you know the law that was passed in recently concluded lok sabha there was a three member panel that was supposed to choose the chief uh, election commissioner or election commissioners earlier when the supreme court ruled supreme court said that there should be a collegium kind of system in which the election commission members or election commissioners will be selected through that particular collegium system in this there were supposed to be prime minister leader of opposition and chief justice of india till the time parliament made law parliament made law in the last session and according to it the search committee or selection committee will be headed by the prime minister it will comprise a union cabinet minister nominated by the prime minister and the third member will be either leader of opposition or leader of the single largest opposition party so the chief justice of india's uh, entry into this has been uh, uh, done away with now once they select it once the selection committee actually you know select a new uh, election commissioner till that time the election commissioner's post will remain vacant how does it uh, affect the election cycle you see election of this particular uh, this will be the first lok sabha election before the resignation actually you know of arun goyal was submitted the election commissioner was effectively two member body one chief election commissioner and one election commission commissioner in the form of arun goyal because already one member had retired in february but with the resignation of this member now election commission is left with cec and this will happen if the lok sabha elections before lok sabha elections if the selection committee does not decide on other names then it will be the first time that the lok sabha election will be conducted under either a one member body or maximum two member body if one more member is not appointed during the 2009 lok sabha election cycle then chief election Co commissioner n gopala swami retired amid the election cycle whenever the election commission elections elections were happening in between that the retirement age of particularly uh, cec was completed he announced the poll schedule on march 2 2009 and retired on april 2020 2009 when the first phase of lok sabha polls was completed navin chawla took over from gopala swami that time in the 13th lok sabha elections of 1999 similar situation arose in which ms gill was the chief election commissioner and two election commissioner gvk gvg krishnamurthy and jm lingdo were there 
Krishna Murthy retired amid the Lok Sabha polls just three days before the last day of polling. So basically, the chief election commissioner's post and the election commissioner's post are required because to have the election in a wonderful and very good logistic manner. If the CEC or one, if if any of the election commissioner goes out, retires, or submits resignation, then it is definitely going to affect the election cycle period. For your kind information, Election Commission of India was a single member body with the Chief Election Commissioner alone from 1950 until 1989. In 1989, the government amended the law to make it a multi-member body with two election commissioner came into picture to assist the CEC. The law was struck down in the court soon, but after a three-member commission was back in place in 1993 when M.S. Gill and G.V.K. Krishnamurti were appointed election commissioners. So how that can help in GS2? So you can frame your answers. Either the question can be formed in the way that you know how the election commissioner's appointment process has been changed or otherwise it can be asked that you know why the chief justice uh, is the chief election commissioner's process in which the CJI was made a member the changing of this by Lok Sabha is valid or not or you can actually you know write down the content in one or the other form of the questions regarding election commissioner anytime second news that is appearing is Mahatari Vandan scheme it is a form of Mahila Shakti so what does what does this scheme intends to do is 70 lakh more than 70 lakh uh, women members will be given more than 700 crore rupees through DBT. What is the scheme? So 1000 rupees per month will be credited into the accounts of these uh, women who are married. So how does this help? Whenever we are expressing the women empowerment point, then in that either we are writing a, uh, a essay or in GS2 if you are writing then we can mention a dimension called financial empowerment financial empowerment in the sense that whenever women actually will have control on the finances they will feel more empowered rather than giving them any other subsidies if we give directly income support to them then it has been proved that the income support that is provided directly provided to women they can either utilize it to better provide education to their children's or they can invest into either their health or some of the uh, better nutritional diets. So this 1000 rupees uh, 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 that is supposed to be deposited into their account will definitely help them into their empowerment with which they can take some of the decisions regarding maybe one of the like education, health or nutritional even in their own mobility also. You know that a lot of states have announced free free mobility to women in the government buses either a Karnataka just like Karnataka government came into power and they implemented this particular scheme how does this empower whenever women actually you know does not feel the need for money to travel in the buses especially the bottom section of the society who do the unpaid work or either a work that is lesser paid they utilize this particular point of uh, schemes and they increase either their uh, incomes or the significant part of income actually that is spent in mobility can be saved and then after it can be invested into one of the things that I told you education health or nutritional status so this is one of the scheme that is going to help in women empowerment in essay writing you can also help that through the DBT, lot of state and union governments have been implementing schemes either through which they are providing direct income support or giving exemptions like free travel or free education or some laptops, etc. So rather than giving them uh, uh, different different you know benefits, this direct income support has its own advantages. Now the third topic that we are reading is Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurating the Sela Tunnel. Sela tunnel at 13,000 feet above the mean sea level, how it was vital for India's interest. You must have seen that after in, in the 1962 war, this Sela pass actually fell in the hands of Chinese that time. And once this fell into Chinese hands, there was a swift mobilization from Tawang to the Arunachal Pradesh main areas and even Assam also. 
so this sela tunnel inauguration which the found for which the foundation stone was laid in 2019 and it has been built at the cost of around 850 crore rupees this tunnel is an all weather connecting tunnel so it can help in this security internal security aspect and even bo uh, better bo border management that is topic with either handling with china relations in gs2 or you can utilize in gs3 internal security so this sela tunnel actually definitely will help the troops move faster number 1 number 2 all weather connectivity number 3 the time taken for the armed forces to move from one place to another it is also will become very easier this also will be definitely helping to build border infrastructure in the remote areas because the infrastructure necessities either through concrete or heavy artillery or heavy machinery can also be transported this can also help us guard the border infrastructure with china vis-a-vis -vis china in a better manner next issue is abortion rights and how france actually has done it france has become the first country to give guaranteed right to abortion in its constitution itself you must have seen that yugoslavia was one country which actually you know in uh, 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 before that actually yugoslavia also written in its constitution but that was not specifically mentioned about the abortion right it just mentioned that yes people have their right to uh, freedom on their body now france uh, 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 france what is done vis-a-vis -vis the abortion rights is that it has written this in the constitution itself on march 8 that was women's day it provided guaranteed right to abortion the measure actually was approved in the joint session of parliament on march 4 and this moves also comes after you must have seen that the in the united state supreme court in 2022 in united state overturned a 50 year law in roy versus wade case roy versus wade case actually was regarding abortions and it banned the abortions but in 2022 supreme court ruling overturned its judgment judgment of 50 years in roy versus wade case and said that abortion should also be allowed to women so on the basis of that the france has taken a particular uh, learning from it and has passed in the joint sitting of parliament giving the abortion rights although the churches there in france criticize it and they objected it but it showed that how the affairs of state and affairs of churches are different in each other the religious leaders could not influence the government decisions and that is why it's a perfect example of secular state also that there is a clear separation between church either religion or state so despite opposition despite vehement opposition from churches the law was passed by the state and the state took this particular position church was opposing this particular abortion right on the philosophy of human rights they say that every human has some sort of human right whether that human is in the fetus that human is in the womb or that human has been born but on a larger perspective the supreme court of united states that time also said that women should also have a guaranteed bodily integrity if you do not provide a bodily integrity decision to women empowerment cannot happen women should be allowed a right of abortion so that their health also can be if there is some health danger then that health danger should also be taken into account so this amendment has been provided in the constitution of france itself and it is being celebrated by women organizations women empowerment groups just like as a guiding light for other european countries or other uh, asian or united state countries united state or latin american countries for such kind of laws to be passed the amendment actually is uh, the um, bill that was introduced last year amended the 17th paragraph of article 34 of the french constitution saying that the law that determine the condition by which it is exercise the freedom of women to voluntarily terminate a pregnancy which permit termination up to 14 weeks 
सो युगोस्लाविया एज आई टोल्ड यू इन 1974 आल्सो सेड दैट अ पर्सन इज फ्री टू डिसाइड ऑन हैविंग चिल्ड्रन एंड दैट सच अ राइट कैन ओनली बी लिमिटेड फॉर द रीजन्स ऑफ हेल्थ प्रोटेक्शन सो इज इट अ फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड येस इट इज फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड बिकॉज फ्रांस हैज रिटर्न डाउन इट इन द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन explicitly saying that the women have the abortion rights yugoslavia in 1974 did say that a person is free to decide on having children and that is why although it implicitly allowed but explicitly it was not written so france attempt is basically giving a lot of uh, i mean energy and a lot of say to women that they can go and approach the hospitals etc for a proper abortion what is the situation in india so india actually has implemented the medical termination of pregnancy act in 1971 this particular act allows licensed medical professionals to perform abortions under specific conditions as long as the pregnancy has not exceeded 20 weeks so up to 20 weeks if there are specific medical conditions then the specific professionals can perform abortions under the medical termination of pregnancy act 1971 the act was amended in 2021 allowing abortions up to 24 weeks for certain cases in which the health of the particular mother is or particular would be mother is under a serious crisis the opinion of only one registered medical practitioners will be required up to abortion of fetus up to 20 week of gestation period and if the pregnancy is between 22 to 24 weeks then the right to seek abortion is determined by the two registered medical practitioners but under certain conditions or categories of forced pregnancies including statutory rape in case of minors or sexual assault women with disabilities on when there is a change in the marital status of women during pregnancy so india allows abortion under this particular medical termination of pregnancy act under these conditions which i told you After 24 weeks the act requires a state level medical board to be set up in approved facilities that may allow or deny the termination of pregnancy so whenever you talk about the abortion rights you can say that india's position is this it does not outrightly regards abortion as a constitutional rights to women while france has given or become the first country in the constitution itself to write it and to give this particular right to women even despite vehement opposition of churches the state has not budged from its position and with this particular provision there looks a clear separation between state and religion emboldening the secular framework of the country itself so i have told you about the india position as well you can utilize this particular manner in the women empowerment section of the essay also by writing just like we mentioned that women empowerment how the income support can also give and you can also mention that you know the uh, uh, entitlement based rights like abortion rights which provide bodily integrity which provides a decision about their own body whether when whether and when to have children this kind of things actually if we provide to women then they will feel empowered once they feel empowered their utility in the paying jobs their utility in the paid aspect of the gdp will further increase and it will further embolden the case of half of the population getting empowered so you can utilize it in the constitution uh, 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 const, uh, sorry essay part of our upsc section even ethical framework also can be uh, one of the uh, question here in ethics also this kind of question can be asked whether providing eth- uh, abortion outrightly is ethical so then you can utilize the answer to frame in a point aspect that yes there are human rights of the would be mother and there are human rights of the fetus when we take into account the human right of fetus also but the fetus has not been born some religion says that fetus has since the fetus actually has come into some life form and whether it is in the womb or outside it has some sort of human rights but majority of the section will say that those who are on the earth itself and if there are certain complications and if complication in 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 complication situations also if the women has to suffer to take a decision or not itself is an ethical crisis so it's it's an ethical dilemma that the society has to deal with so there are two sort of you know conflict among this human right of the fetus or would be child or human rights of would be mother who is struggling number 2 ethical framework is the rights of or the power of or the empowerment of the 
half half section of the society it is also ethically wrong that we do not give any right to women when and whether to have child and in what situation they can abort and subjugating this and and denying the women actually this kind of facility or this kind of empowerment or this kind of uh, facility will definitely not do good to women itself so it is also ethically wrong to deny women their own rights so whenever you writing in ethics paper 4 this kind of uh, arguments can be mentioned now we move to the next topic ai advisory we know that in gs3 it talks about technology and artificial intelligence machine learning are the new form of technologies but with the new form of technologies as you know artificial intelligence it has come with its own set of challenges challenges in the form of just like you must have heard that google's gemini when it was uh, given a query regarding our current prime minister it did produce result but the results were not in accordance with whatever the, uh, these kind of models are supposed to give so how these te- technologies are less uh, uh, i mean you know how the technologies actually can work to the disadvantage of the population if they are not regulated well so in gs3 or either in sa paper you can write about the you can use this content to further build your answer you see in artificial intelligence no matter this policy or this particular technology is way way better because it can detect your health complications it can give you large language model based of calculation which can be definitely good to uh, particularly giving a, 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 a we can say that you know a forecast about a particular weather event artificial intelligence can also help you to define the queries or data sets refining the data set in a much much better quality which the government can use for its own policy purposes these are the ai's wonderful examples but when we talk about the cons of uh, ai technology ai technology has this bigger con in which if it is not regulated the gemini kind of you know answers that are produced for our current current prime minister will be definitely produced deep fake is another concern with associated with ai deep fake in which actually we just you know show the uh, other women other other photo, other persons photograph in a manner that he was present in the same capacity or in the same manner as the image was showing so with the deep fakes you can morph the photos and show them some somebody in a compromising position or somebody in a particular situation in which they were not available that time so when we talk about the artificial intelligence the government has given an advisory that those models like chat gpt or gemini which are under testing or unreliable if any results is to be made then we have to explicitly take the permission from government of india it does mean that whichever like chat gpt or gemini kind of models which give answers and if they are in the testing phase or unreliable phase they have to take the permission from government of india first because you must have seen that india's digital revolution has generated so much of data so much of data is being consumed and so much of data is being produced by indian population that the other large big tech companies like google or microsoft or meta or some other companies uh, or open ai etc are trying to utilize that particular data to feed or to train their own large language models like chat gpt and gemini so government has said that in case they are un under testing or unreliable you have to take the government permission we must have also read that you know regulations are also must for the new technologies we have seen that regulation always fall behind the newer sections of technologies until that time the technology has done some harm the regulations arrive after that although the government has said that this rule applies only for the big tech companies not for our startups so startups as of now does not have to face this kind of situation but some of the people say some of the startup founders or some of the large you know technology houses say that requiring government permission actually will definitely uh, not uh, be a good for or not be good for the innovation to happen in the field of ai but we cannot put our security on security whether it's an internal security or a personal liberty and freedom on a particular disadvantage because the images those are generated by ai through defect technology etc can be very harmful for the reputation 
it can be harmful for the defamation it can be harmful it can produce some pornographic effect also so some sort of government regulation is necessary so the answer so the question that can be asked to you in the paper number 30 is whether the regulation to the new technologies is the is the required thing or not so you can frame your answer in the aspect that definitely the new technologies are good they improve the living standards of people but at the same time when they are unreliable or when they are under testing phase some sort of regulation should be there and those who are builders of the technology itself they should feel moral duty or ethical duty for the society at large that they do not do any kind of things which bring masses into conflict which bring actually uh, a person into disrepute a defamation which does not you know produce result for child pornography etc and in the disguise of some other information that has been taken even last you can also say that government should also avoid itself from over regulation because new technology requires hand holding and the government regulation can only work where there is a danger to the society this can be used in gs3 because internal security and technology is in the paper number third social media at large and gs uh, in in uh, answer of essay in which the technologies effect on the society in which you can build your answer like this now a new topic regarding nepal's politics you must have seen that you know nepal which is a neighbor buffer state between india and china how important it is for india for gs2 it is good for so whenever we talk about uh, nepal china has been also trying to make inroads into nepal through its belt and road initiative nepal actually joined belt and road initiative in 2017 but there has not been any single project actually that has been implemented in uh, nepal in uh, uh, as part of the bri in september 2022 uh, september 2023 prachanda who is current prime minister who has broken the ranks with the nepali congress visited uh, china and wanted to get some project but prime minister devba also when he was in, he was prime minister in 2022 at the time also he uh, opposed this particular part so nepali uh, politics has taken a new turn in which nepal congress and the coalition of prachanda dahel party has broken down and nepalese prachanda actually had joined hands with oli's party both nepal prachanda and nepalese prime minister prachanda's party and oli's party are left parties and as you know china china is basically itself as as is a left organization so it wanted to see a leftist just like it flourished earlier also so both external and internal factors are working and left parties have taken left parties have again come into coalition and they will form the government next it is a little worry for india because india always has supported the cause of nepali congress or those parties which do not toe the chinese lines but when with china explicitly or implicitly if this coalition has again come into picture it can become one of the major reason of worry for india because when the belt and road initiative project any of the belt and road initiative project is implemented in nepal it can definitely bring a lot of harm to our own interests as you know nepal depend for nepal depend on india or for its own exports or lot of imports go through either energy imports or food imports go through india and that is why it is important for us also because it's a buffer state between india and china and nepal's autonomy or nepal's friendly relation with india are so important for our own sovereignty and integrity that's why this particular government formation is important let us see how does it ha- how does it do vis-a-vis vis india's relation whether it do any kind of thing actually which is antithetical to our country we will keep on updating then there is another topic which can come into gs3 legal framework need for genomics you know genomics genomics means g- genome samples actually for the country are sequenced and analyzed this is called genomics so genome genome means how are the women's uh, how are the populations genome are sequenced so we have recently you must have seen that india has successfully sequenced around 10000 genomes in our country and why so that the the benefit of genome sequencing is so that you know we can definitely know what are the dna structure of our country's people number 2 when there either there is any kind of you know mutations in the genome sequence because i study some time back in uh, around 20 years back 
talked about you know how a simple mutation in one of the genes among men one of the genes among our population caused heart attacks so genome sequencing will definitely gives us a larger data set in which we will be able to identify if there is any kind of mutations what kind of you know uh, vaccines will work if there is any epidemic what kind of you know uh, uh, interventions will be needed if what kind of antibiotics has to be given genome also can help in these kind of things so why india needs a legal framework because the genome sequencing of 10000 people have we have stored the genome sequencing so for that data protection is needed if we give a legal framework for the data protection it will be easier otherwise you know the, the genome sequencing can be then you know stolen by either enemies of our country or countries you know internal security threat elements and that can be uh, antithetical to our own developmental needs number 2 the health ministry standing committee also clearances are required for research collaboration and for that also legal framework will definitely help director general of foreign trade notification currently enables sample from india to cross border for commercial purposes so genome sequencing data also travels across the globe across the geography and because of the travel across the geography if the legal framework is not applied then it can also become that you know the genome sequencing data can go into the hands of vested interests despite significant established capacity and expertise in india a significant number of samples are sequenced or analyzed by companies outside so for their oversight and regulation we require a legal framework with a number of organization providing genetic testing services the data remain in silos and discrimination based on genome information is the real concern due to lack of laws preventing it that's why we are talking about the legal framework of genomics if any other to uh, any other question comes then you should write also that you know india should also legally uh, uh, india should also generate a framework which legal which provides legal protection for genomic data so we are stopping here uh, for more such videos you can like the button and subscribe the channel thank you